Hi guys, welcome back. This week I'm going to be talking to you about Zouaves and specifically those that were involved in the American Civil War. Now, sort of the Zouave uniform became very, very fashionable in the mid-19th century and was pretty enthusiastically adopted in America, particularly uh, by Union forces. Now, the classic uniform is usually this combination of dark blue and red. A lot of you uh, will have seen it, but it came in some other colors too. There was brown sometimes in there, or brown uniforms or gold, yellow trim going on. Various combinations were possible, but what you'll see most often is some mix of blue and red. So that's what I'm going to be uh, painting for you today. This is the model I'm going to be showing you how to paint. He is by War Games Foundry, and his uniform is just very typical of how Zoua is dressed. They had these sort of very full baggy sort of short breeches, uh, crop jacket, and sort of a wide sash. The only thing that is a little bit atypical here is he has a normal sort of kepi on. Now this kepi would have been a blue or red sort of thing to go with the rest of the uniform, but a lot of Zouaves, instead of a kepi, actually wore uh, a fez or even a turban. So that makes him a little bit different, but you know, it also depends a lot on the period too. You're going to see the equipment changing through the course of the war. Now, even though most Zouaves are sort of basically similar in the cut of their uniform and the colors, uh, there are a lot of subtle differences, like in terms of what particular piece of clothing is what color and where they have trim, what the trim looks like, a sort of extra ornamentation and decoration that was often on these uniforms varies from regiment to regiment or unit to unit. So before you go and start painting as well, make sure you really do your homework and figure out which one you're going to be doing. I'm going to be painting this guy as a member of the Maryland Guard Zouaves. Now, I chose them because their uniform looks very similar to the one on this model, and they have that sort of typical red-blue color combination that I wanted to show you. One thing that is a little bit weird about them, though, is they were actually a Confederate Zouave unit, and there were quite a lot less of those than there were uh, fighting for the Union. And I can only imagine that this particular unit must have had some problems with their uniform because it was so similar to what a lot of Union Zouaves were wearing that it seems very likely that they must have run into some confusion or issues on the actual battlefield. So as usual, here are all the paints that you're going to need to complete this model, except for what I used on the face, hands, and hair. Those are not included here. I'm going to start off by base coating here the majority of his uniform, which is going to be a dark blue shade. That's his pants, uh, his uh, sort of over jacket, and sort of a band on his hat. Uh, I'm using here a mixture of black and dark Prussian blue for my uh, base layer. So my first highlight now on the blue areas of the uniform will be just a pure dark Prussian blue. It's kind of hard to see because the contrast with the black is not very high, so you may find you really need to focus a bright spot on here just to see what you're doing while you're painting. And I'm going to be really careful here to blend this really well and into any folds or kind of creases in the uniform where they're at sort of a, tr a big transition area. And that's something that will really uh, pay off later when we start applying the more extreme lighter highlight colors. I'm going to continue highlighting now by mixing some medium blue into the dark uh, Prussian blue and applying it to areas where light is hitting and creases and folds and that kind of thing. The color you're going to get when you mix the medium blue in is going to seem really bright on your palette uh, more than you probably think you want, but just remember that when you apply it very thinly over a very dark base coat like this, uh, it's not going to lighten as quickly or as strongly as you think. You, you actually would have to apply lots and lots of coats of it to get the same brightness. So you can work with pretty, sh really pretty bright shades of blue over these dark bases without really having to worry too much. I just continue the highlighting process here by mixing even more medium blue into the color I already have, just getting it a bit lighter. And just continuing to build up uh, thin layers of the color so that it gets gradually brighter and brighter. And 
this is really a case where you can use the same uh, color multiple times, just layering it three or four times to get sort of progressive, progressively brighter shades. You don't need extra paints to do it, and it's nice too because this will me make sure it's easier to get really smooth, uh, gradual transitions going. Here I'm just working with pure Vallejo medium blue and I think this just again underscores the point that you can take a very bright bright blue and when applied thinly over a really dark base coat like this it's not going to overwhelm the uniform too quickly because I mean obviously you don't want this to turn into a really bright shocking blue it should be a deep uh, blue color that you're aiming for but at the same time I find at least on these small models that you often want to get more extreme contrast in your blue than would be there in real life just because it, that's what's necessary at 28 millimeter to just to make the uniform look good and have really good clear differentiation between kind of the shadow and the highlight areas. I now mix one sort of final, very subtle kind of highlight here, which is the medium blue with just a little bit of sky gray in it. And I'm using this just on the very sharpest kind of creases or sort of really to cut in between uh, sharp um, folds where there's a division between a, a sort of a crease and a really dark area, as you'll see. And then just as kind of an edge highlight where there's seams or around his hat band, that kind of thing. This color I'm being very sparing with and I'm really blending it out a lot because of course you don't want this to go on here too strong. Now this unit is also wearing kind of a sash and the color of this kind of varied from regiment to regiment. Uh, the Maryland Guards was had kind of a gray blue one and I kind of sort of started painting it while I was working on the uniform. That is to say I base coated it with the same blue. I applied just the first layer of dark Prussian blue and then sort of a second layer where there was a bit of that medium blue mixed in but I didn't really highlight it any further. I left it and now I'm coming back to it and I'm applying here a um, a layer of uh, Luftwaffe uniform World War II, which is kind of a very gray blue. I'm going to kind of start building that up um, over top. I'm going to be uh, using some sky gray mixed in there and a couple of layers just to uh, get it a little bit lighter and highlight it more. And you can see after you've got those highlights on, there's a real more clear, distinct difference in color between it and uh, the rest of the uniform. The other main component, of course, of all Zouave uniforms is going to be the red, and you're going to really have to look at whatever specific unit you're painting here to figure out where the red needs to go. In this case, there's going to be red uh, piping around the sleeves. Uh, there's going to be red piping or sort of around the edge of the jacket. He's got red uh, stripes down the sides of his pants. His undershirt is red and sort of the top part of his kepi is also red. Additionally, these uniforms were really often sort of ornamented with sort of bric-a-brac sort of or embroidery work. Not really embroidery, but it was sort of sewn on, I guess. Uh, in the case of the Maryland Guards Wives, that is very limited. It's just kind of one kind of curly cue visible on the side of his jacket. But some of these guys you'll see have very, very complicated uh, motifs with sort of swirls in red. So that's something you may, you know, need to practice your freehand work with a little bit to do well or move to a smaller brush. I just use a number one, but you might find a number zero e here easier. The base coat for all the red areas is just uh, Vallejo black red, which is sort of the color that I generally use for this kind of thing. My first highlight on the uh, red is going to be Citadel Mephiston Red. It is a base color from them, so you're going to want to take it out of the pot and thin it down a little bit just so it flows a little bit easier. And I'm going to be applying it pretty much everywhere. It's a fairly transparent color, and you will probably find that you want to build up at least two layers of it to sort of reach maximum saturation. Um, I'm still using my number one brush for this, but really I should have used a number zero. It would have been a lot easier to control on all these little fine areas that I'm sort of having to detail here. To get even more striking bright red, I've now taken some Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet. 
and I'm layering that again over the red areas. And it's the same with before. You'll probably need a couple of layers of this to get sort of maximum saturation. But again, you can sort of control uh, with the layering areas that you want to be more highlighted and areas that you want more shaded. That is, you should apply uh, areas that should be lighter with more layers of this color and areas that you want to stay a little bit darker with less. You can really have fun on the striping on his pants because it's really there's really clear wrinkles there. So you can really make sure you put the brighter reds only on the sort of tops of the folds and really leave the darker reds down in the creases and it'll really show and it'll really give you a really nice looking effect. Now, depending on how fussy you want to be, you could really stop here and just leave the red as is, but I've recently taken to adding an extra highlight, sort of edge highlight really, to my red, and I do that by taking, in this case, some Vallejo Beige and mixing it into the Evil Sun Scarlet, which gives it, as you can see, kind of a slight pinky raspberry tone. And now I really have moved to the number zero brush, finally, I've wised up. And I use this as sort of a, sort of to really sharpen the edge between the red and the blue and to add just these sort of extra crisp extreme highlights which look really really nice when you've got these areas of thin piping. It's really important say on that curly cue on his jacket because it really helps define it and make it stand out and I find that just taking the time to do this extra step will keep your red from being it'll just it keep, makes the red just pop a little bit more it's a little bit less muddy. The only thing you have to be a little careful of is not to put this too much not overdo the areas where you apply it because you'll end up making your red look more like pink than red. Next, I'm going to be base coating the black areas on this model, which include, in this case, his shoes, and then like his patch box, his cartridge box, those kinds of things, which are black leather. He's got a little bayonet case, which I did in black, and of course, there's a bill on his hat and sort of a front band at the front of the cappy, and you're going to want to base coat those areas in black as well. I'm going to be highlighting the black areas in the way that I usually do. I've got some sky gray here, and I just mixed a little bit of it into the black, and I'm going to be using that to build up highlights. So my first layer is going to be fairly subtle. I don't make a big uh, step there at all. And then I'm just going to kind of progressively mix in a little bit uh, more sky gray in each layer. And you can do as many layers like this as you want until you kind of feel happy with it. Uh, do keep in mind with things like the boots or the um, sort of the cartridge case areas where you think there'd be kind of shiny leather, you're going to want to apply some sort of thin lines of a much lighter shade of gray sort of towards the end, you know, just as an edge highlight to sort of emphasize areas where you want there to look like there's a shine hitting the leather. So, I, like on the cartridge case, I really like to do it around the edges sort of the top edge. On the shoes, often I'll put a little bit on sort of the toe of the boots particularly. And on belts or straps, really, I run a really fine line right along just the top, sort of where the light is shining down and hitting everything. Now this can vary, but in the uh, picture I was looking at, the water canteen was covered in kind of a gray-blue fabric. So I'm base coating this with the Luftwaffe Uniform World War II again, and then I'm going to add a couple of lightening layers just by mixing in a little bit of sky gray. And this is a real small area, so you don't need to spend too much time doing this. Now the um, strap over the canteen could should I think kind of be a kind of a light gray shade. So I'm taking some sky uh, gray here. I mix just a little black in to darken it down slightly from what it was, and I'm going to use that to sort of base coat the straps. Uh, once I've got that done, I'm going to start working on his. Uh, putties or spats or whatever you want to call them, which for, for when you're talking about the Maryland Guards walls, they should be uh, white. So I'm base coating those with a layer of uh, sky gray just by itself. And I'm going to then use that sky gray to apply a, a first highlight layer to the straps on the water canteen as well.
I'm now going to take some white and mix it into my scraggy gray, kind of go for 50-50 uh, ratio. And I'm going to start highlighting uh, the spats here, particularly uh, with all light colors like this. You're you're going to have to build up multiple layers here, really. And I'm going to be doing, you know, a little careful work here just to make sure that everything looks smooth, but the, also that we maintain some clear sort of folds and creases in the spats because they are modeled there. And it'll look better than if we just try to overwhelm the whole thing with a lot of white. So I'm going to be building this up, up carefully and just kind of taking my time. I'm also going to use this color as sort of the highest highlight on the uh, canteen uh, strap. As I said, the strap doesn't really appear to be white. It appears to be kind of off-white or gray, so I don't want to highlight it quite as much as I'm going to be highlighting the spats. So that's why I'm going to be kind of stopping with that after this level. Though you may want to build up a couple layers of it just so that you can get a little bit of sort of brighter areas where light is hitting. White is going to be my uh, final highlight on the spats, obviously, and like whenever you're painting white, you don't really need a lot of different paint colors to do it. You just need some patience, and you just have to apply kind of lots and lots of layers of the same colors over and over again, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm just going to keep going back over these spats and just building up the white more and more and focusing it really on the areas where I think a lot of light would be hitting and just trying to get it really, really bright on the sort of the highest folds and creases and then leaving a little less gray or a little more gray, I guess I should say, uh, where uh, there's a little bit less high, uh, light hitting. I'm now going to be base coating his mess bag. Uh, you can be pretty flexible with what colors you use for this, but I'm base coating it here using Vallejo uh, Khaki. On reflection, I probably actually should have painted this before I did the canteen and strap just because it's underneath and it was a little tricky to do a neat job and I actually had to go back and do some cleanup work because of the fact that I painted this second. But it's totally uh, doable and you'll probably need a couple layers just to get enough coverage over the black. I'm going to apply a first highlight to the satchel by mixing a bit of Vallejo beige into the khaki and you can see I'm going to just do a little bit of layering on the bag there. It's pretty uh, hidden under other stuff and there aren't a lot of folds or wrinkles so this shouldn't take you too long and plus you've got sort of the areas where it's undercut uh, where there's going to be shadows so you don't really want to highlight those a lot but you can build up uh, the layers here a couple times. I think I actually mixed in more uh, beige after a while just so that I could get a sort of a second highlight as well. I didn't want to lighten the uh, sort of satchel too much with beige because it would have made the whole thing a little bit yellower than I wanted. So after a while I sort of continued lightening the color by mixing in white instead that kept it a little bit paler but I'm not going to go for a really pale white color just slightly lighter and so that's kind of my final highlight in the satchel here it just has a bit of white mixed into it now I'm going to work on the rifle stock uh, I'm using Vallejo chocolate brown for this. I actually freaked out a little bit when I first started working on this model because I was like, oh gosh, I'm painting this guy as a Confederate Zouave and I don't know if the model is actually meant as a Union Zouave and maybe he's carrying the wrong kind of gun, but I actually think that this set from Foundry is actually meant for Confederate Zouaves as it turns out, so I'm kind of lucky there. And also, of course, the fact that the Confederates uh, tended to just use whatever equipment they could get their hands on, certainly in terms of guns, so I don't think it's too big a problem. Um, after I base coated the uh, stock, I then went ahead and took some khaki and mixed it into the chocolate brown and a sort of applied a, a highlight to the wood areas. And then after one highlight with a mix, I then used pure khaki to highlight it further. And I finished with an edge highlight where I mixed a little bit of beige into the khaki. And that I really only ran kind of along uh, the edges where the wood kind of divides from the barrel and the ramrod and that kind of thing. I'm continue working on 
both the gun and also sort of the steel metal areas on this model. I took some black here. Uh, I lightened it a little tiny bit with the sky gray. And then I mixed in some Vallejo Air gun metal to give it a metallic sheen. And I'm going to use that to base coat uh, all the sort of areas on his gun, like the barrel, the ramrod, the sort of securing bands, the bayonet, all that stuff. Also, I'm going to paint in the buttons on his spats, and there's also two little buttons on the side of his hat, which I'm going to base coat with the, that color of paint. Once that was done, I highlighted particularly the metal areas on the gun a bit further by adding in some extra gun gray to my mix and sort of building that up on the sort of the, the barrel and the bayonet and the bands, that kind of thing. Uh, and then after that, I then went back in with just pure gun gray and applied sort of a extreme bright highlight to those areas. I was a little bit more sparing on like the barrel or areas that I thought would not get as shiny. And I put a lot more on say the bayonet and you know, the the lock mechanism on the gun and I use this to put a real pop of color onto the buttons on the various parts of the uniform. Uh, I didn't show it on camera but if you want you could even add one sort of final layer of just Vallejo Air Steel as well. Uh, you don't probably want to put that on most of the gun hardware but it is nice to put that on the bayonet particularly if you want it to look really shiny and sharp like it should be and maybe also on the buttons which should probably be sh extra bright looking. There were a few kind of brass gold areas too on this figure, namely his belt buckle here and a few of the fittings at the base of the gun. I just base coated those areas with a mixture of chocolate brown and Vallejo Air gold. And then I just went back in with some pure Vallejo Air gold to add kind of a quick highlight on top. Okay, so here is our finished American Civil War Confederate Zouave. As I mentioned at the beginning, uh, the uniform worn by these Maryland Guard Zouaves was very, very much like what a lot of Union Zouaves were wearing, so the, the potential for confusion was very high, but I think you can because of the similarity, really use this figure as sort of a guide for helping you paint your Union forces as well. They, they, they really overlap uh, quite a bit. The really important things with these uniforms is to pay attention to the details of the specific unit you're painting so you get the red and blue in the right places. And of course, you want to sort of really invest a lot of time and effort obviously that into really getting the red and blue to look nice, putting lots of nice highlights and they're getting a lot of contrast because they're really the important focal point of these uniforms. And so they're really where you wanna spend your time. So I really hope you enjoyed uh, this video. If you did, please like it, uh, please share it. Leave me comments with what you thought. Of course, I always like to hear from you and you can always subscribe too if you wanna keep up with my updates whenever they come out. So that's all for now and uh, I'll see you next time.